I just discovered this one-page productivity app that has been downloaded by over 10 million people and is generating $100,000 every month. And the insane part is that this app is just a simple countdown app. So while everyone is trying to build complex apps and learning to code, I'm going to teach you how to replicate this one-page app using AI and how you can start making money from day one. And in the end, you'll have a fully working mobile app on your phone that turns your focus sessions into a personal universe of stars and constellations. Now here's the plan we'll follow. First, we're going to use a free tool to turn your app idea into perfect prompts for AI. Then we'll set up Cloud Code to build the entire app for us step by step. Just a year ago, building a productivity app like this would have cost you $30,000 and taken like three months with a team of developers. But now you can do it yourself in just a few hours with zero coding experience. So let's get started. First, head over to braindumper.ai, it's a completely free tool I built to help you turn any app idea into perfect prompts that work with any AI app builder. And trust me, this first step is going to save you hours of back and forth with the AI later. In this video, we're building a mobile app, so I'll select that option, and I'll be using Windsurf as our AI coding assistant. Why? Because I personally find Windsurf's pricing way more transparent than Cursor. I used to use Cursor, but here's the thing. I burned through my credits insanely fast and had to pay again and again and again. But Windsurf costs $15 a month for 500 prompt credits. Now just brain dump what you want your app to do in this box. And here's the key. Don't hold anything back when you're brain dumping. The more details you give, the better your final prompt will be. This is one of the most important principles in AI app building. Detailed context equals better results. After you've brain dumped your entire app idea, click generate. Now our AI agent will simplify your idea down to an MVP. And just so we're clear, an MVP or minimum viable product is the simplest version of your app that still solves the core problem for users. This step is crucial because it helps you actually ship the app instead of spending weeks or months building something nobody wants. I've seen too many people try to build everything at once and never finish. All right, now it's ready. And you're going to see in just a minute how much easier this makes the entire build process. By the way, I've written this entire video as a step-by-step -step guide if you want to follow along as you build. Link is in the description. Now let's launch Windsurf and download it if you haven't already. If you click this button, you'll get 250 credits for free when you sign up. And when you eventually need to upgrade, you'll get 20% off if you use my code BWAI20 at checkout. So that's just $12 a month instead of $15. Okay, so now I've downloaded and opened Windsurf. Now let's click open folder and create a new folder for your app. I'll call mine Stellar. Once you select it, Windsurf will reopen with this folder in your workspace. Now head back to Brain Dumper and click the button to download the context file. This file includes everything you need to build out your mobile app. It's basically your app's blueprint. Think of it as a detailed instruction manual that the AI will use to understand exactly what you want to build. Just drag this into the folder we just created in Windsurf. Perfect. Now let's quickly install Cloud Code as an extension into Windsurf. This is going to be the AI that actually writes all the code for us. Head to the extensions tab in the left sidebar and search for Cloud Code for VS Code. Click on this one and install it. Now click the icon in the top left corner to go back to the main tab. Now let's run Cloud Code by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus P and then type Run Cloud Code, then hit Enter. This will open Cloud Code inside Windsurf. Choose your theme color by hitting Enter. I'll go with Dark Mode. And now we need to log into our account so we can actually use Cloud Code. We can authenticate either with our Cloud account, which requires a $20 a month subscription, or via API, which might be cheaper since you only pay for the API credits you actually use. I'll choose the API option and show you how easy this is to set up. And just like that, we've connected our Cloud account to Cloud Code in the terminal. Now just hit enter to start, choose yes, use recommended settings, then yes, proceed to trust all the files in this folder. And now Cloud Code is set up, now here comes the fun part. Head over to console.anthropic.com, log in and top up around $20 to your developer account so we can use the API to build our app. All right, now back in Windsurf, this terminal might look a bit complicated. I totally get it if you're thinking that, but honestly, you'll get used to this in just a few days. It's way simpler than it looks. If you type slash help, you'll see a list of commands you can run. But right now I'll select the Cloud model that we'll be using to build our app type slash model and hit enter. Now we have three options, default, opus, 
and Opus plan mode. Since we're building out the entire app right now, I'll choose the plan mode. This helps the AI think through the entire build before it starts coding. This is a key AI development principle. Planning first means fewer errors later. Now type slash init and tag the context file we uploaded to the project by typing at. And since we only have one file in the project, it'll pop up immediately. Hit enter for this command and now Claude code will create a claude.md file using the context from our context file downloaded from Braindumper to plan out the entire app build. This is where the magic starts to happen. So in the terminal now, the AI is asking us if we want it to make this edit to claude.md, which is the new file it just created. Just choose yes, allow all edits during this session. And now just wait for Claude to finish. Okay, now in the top left, we can see the claude.md file has been generated. Perfect. Let's prompt. Hey Claude, check the context files and build the app as per the instructions Think given. Think hard and use to-dos to build the app step by step. Then hit enter. Now the AI has full context of our codebase, which is empty right now. So it'll plan out everything it needs to do in a to-do list to get the entire app built for us. We can see here what it has planned to do. Set up the project and its basic project structure, configure Superbase, implement user authentication, create the core screens of the app, and more. This is exactly why we chose plan mode. It breaks down the entire build into manageable steps. Now the AI wants to run the command npx create expo app at latest dot template blank TypeScript. Just hit enter for yes. Claude failed to run the command, so it'll create a new folder for the app first and then run the command to build the project structure. This is actually a perfect example of how AI development works. When something fails, the AI adapts and finds another way. You don't need to panic or fix it manually yourself. We can see what's happening if we open the folder it just made. Here you can see it's already added some files. Let's just wait for it to finish. This is where it gets really interesting. Now the AI wants to install a bunch of different packages, so just choose Yes. Okay, so apparently Claude code got disconnected now, as we can see here. So let's exit the terminal and type slash status. And here we can see it's not connected to Windsurf anymore. So let's just reconnect it. Don't worry if this happens to you. It's super common and takes just seconds to fix. Hit enter and type slash ID, then choose Windsurf. Now I'll just prompt the AI to continue where it left off. The latest command was to install all of the packages. So let's choose yes. Okay, it failed to run it. So it'll fix the command line, then just hit yes again and now it runs. It'll continue to ask for permission to install several packages, so just hit yes every time. These are the libraries and tools your app needs to function. Alright, so when the AI is done installing all the packages, it'll continue by building out the entire mobile app. In the next few minutes, you're going to see an entire app come together right before your eyes. First, it's setting up the project structure with screens and components. This is the foundation of our entire app. Then the Superbase integration for the backend. This is what will store all our user data. Next up, implementing the user authentication flow using Superbase Auth, so users can create accounts and log in. The home screen with the timer is coming together now. This is the main feature of our app, building out the screen for the stars that will be displayed, the reward system that keeps users motivated. Navigation between all of these screens is being wired up, so users can move smoothly through the app. The notification system is getting configured. This will send out notifications to users when they're done with a focus session. Here it's even adding some detailed animations. These little touches make the app feel professional. And finally, it's now testing the app functionality for us, making sure everything works before we even see it. Perfect. Now it's done after 10 minutes, but then the AI actually uses the wrong command to run the app, so I'll choose no, and then I'll prompt it. Use the command npx expo start to run the app. Nice! Now it uses the correct command, so let's hit yes. Now the AI says, perfect, I've successfully built the complete Stellar productivity app according to the specifications. Here's what has been implemented. So it has implemented all of the core functionality as listed here. Now let's run the app on our mobile phone to see how it's looking, but first there's one crucial step we need to to complete. Okay, but before we can actually use the app, we need to connect Superbase so we can log into the app as a user and save everything we do inside it to a database. This is the backend that makes everything work. So if you find the .env.example file, these are the two Superbase API keys we need to add into our codebase. Think of these as the keys that connect your app to your database. Head over to superbase.com and create an account if you haven't already. Superbase is completely free to start. Then you also need to create a new organization if you haven't 
done that either. Click create new organization, give it a name and click create organization. Nice. Now we also need to create a project. This is the project that we're going to connect to our app. Every app needs its own Superbase project. Add a password and you can name the project whatever you want. But I'm just keeping it as it is. Though I'd probably give it your app's name, then click create new project. Perfect. Now your Superbase project is created. Now on this page that you're redirected to, scroll down until you see the project API section. Here are the two keys that we need to add into our code base, the project URL and API key. Go ahead and copy the project URL, open Windsurf again, remove the placeholder text from expo public superbase URL and replace it with the URL you just copied. Now let's do the same for the expo public superbase anon key. Head back to superbase, copy the API key, remove the placeholder text and paste in the key here as well. Now save the file and just exit out of it. Perfect, now superbase is connected. But then we need to upload the database schema. Basically the code that sets up all of the database tables that we're going to save all of our data in. So open the database schema.sql file and copy all the content in the file. This was automatically generated by the AI earlier. Now go back to Superbase and in the left sidebar open the SQL editor tab. In the chat here paste in the content you just copied from Windsurf. Then press the run button or press Control or command and enter. Okay but now we got an error so what I'll do now is copy the error by pressing this button then back in Windsurf in the Claude code tab I'll paste in the error and type this is the error I got while running the and then I'm going to tag the database schema.sql file by typing at and then typing database and here it pops up. So just hit enter to tag the file. This is exactly how you should handle errors in AI development. Just give the AI the error message, maybe some context and let it fix it. Now just wait for Claude to finish fixing the database schema file and then we'll try again. The AI will figure out what went wrong and correct it. Okay, now the database schema is updated, so let's try to run this one more time in Superbase. Copy the content of the file, head back to Superbase and paste this into the SQL editor, then run the script, and just like that, now the script ran successfully, as we can see here. Amazing. Now if you go to the left sidebar and navigate to the table editor page, you'll be able to see all three new tables we just created from this script. This is where all the data from the app is going to be saved. Every time a new user signs up, completes a focus session, or when someone creates a new work group, it all gets saved right here in these tables. Now let's try to run the app directly from our mobile phone. So now go back to Windsurf, open a new terminal, and to run the app, we need to open the actual apps folder, so type cd, and then the name of your apps folder. You can type the first letter and then press tab for it to autocomplete, then hit enter, and now type npx expo start. This command starts the development server so you can test your app locally. Now it'll say that we're already running the app, but this is the Claude code window so just hit yes to run it in another terminal. Now comes the moment of truth. We've built the code, we've connected the backend, and now we're going to run this thing on our actual physical device. First, grab your phone and head to the App Store or Play Store. You need to download an app called Expo Go. This is the tool that lets us bridge the gap between our code and our phone instantly. Back in Windsurf, just open your Expo Go app, scan that QR code, and voila, we are in. First, let's proceed to sign up using an account. This creates a user in that Superbase database we just set up. Once signed up, you will see this on your home screen. Let's look around the app now. If you check the constellations tab, you'll see it's empty since we have zero constellations right now. In the profile tab, we can change the default timer durations for work and other things. Fully customizable. Now let's actually make a constellation. I will call it work. We can see this constellation has seven stars and it has also appeared in the constellation tab. Now when we start to work, we can allow for notifications. Amazing! The notifications are working too. Let's wait for a minute for the timer to complete and we will have our very first star or task completed. Perfect! As you can see, the star has lit up signifying that one task has been completed. You now have a fully working productivity app running right in the palm of your hand. Now for the last step, we're going to test the whole thing using Apple's test flight. You only need two accounts for this, an Expo dev account and an Apple developer account. Start by going to expo.dev and creating an account. It takes a minute. Once you're done, log in and leave that tab open. We'll come back to it. Next, head to developer.apple.com slash account. Sign up there as well. Apple charges $99 a year for the developer program and once you pay that, the dashboard will unlock. It should look something like this. Alright, let's jump back in 
in to windsurf and run the command npx test flight. It'll ask you to log into your EAS account. That's the expo account we just made. Enter your email or username, then your password. When that's done, it'll ask if you want to configure the EAS project. Hit Y and let it do its thing. This part takes a bit. Now it's going to prompt you to log into your Apple account. Type in your Apple ID email, hit enter, then your password. If you have two-factor authentication turned on, which you probably do, you'll get a text with a six-digit code. Enter that. After this, say yes to the next two prompts. It'll ask whether you want to enable push notifications for this project. Since our app actually uses notifications, go ahead and press yes again. And now the build starts. Expo will upload your whole project and run through the build pipeline. While that's happening, flip back to your Expo dashboard. You'll see the build sitting in a queue. You can click view build to see every step it's running through. It also gives you a direct link to the logs if you want the raw details. Over on your Apple developer dashboard, go to the apps section. You'll see your app has already appeared there. Click into it and open the test flight tab. Right now the build list is empty because EAS is still working. That's normal. If you switch to the testers section, you'll see the email that will receive the test flight invite once the build is uploaded and processed. And that's it. Once the build lands, you'll get the invite on that email and you can install the app on your iPhone like any other test flight app. If you're serious about building with AI, join our free community where thousands of builders are sharing their projects, getting feedback and helping each other solve problems. Link is in the description. And if you want to see me build even more apps with AI, check out this video I'm showing on screen right now. Thank you for watching and as always, happy building!